I've used the PlayStation 5 for over a year now and I got some stuff to say about it. It's actually not all going to be positive, so let's dive into this review. The meat of any console purchase will always come down to the games. I'm a big fan of Sony exclusives and the games I have been able to play in the last 12 months have been nothing short of incredible. Spider-Man Miles Morales was the first PS5 game I've ever played and it blew me away. The graphics were excellent, combat was fluid. This was actually the first game that opened my eyes to what 4K next-gen gaming would become. It wasn't just a visual upgrade for me. I was also able to reap the benefits of significantly reduced load times, which radically changed my gaming experience and how quickly things just ran on the PS5. Ratchet and Clank Ripped Apart was another amazing game that came out last year. I was blown away by how good this game looked and how smooth it ran. To me personally, it topped Spider-Man because of how memorable and challenging the entire experience was. Sackboy A Big Adventure was another game I picked up. It was just this chill, bubbly platformer to sort of mix up my gaming sessions every few weeks and to play with friends, but Nothing too crazy to write home about. And that is sort of where it ended for me in terms of PS5 exclusives. There just weren't that many that came out in 2021 and I'll still get to more of them in a second, but generally it was pretty disappointing to see the flow of games that we got. We, we just didn't get that many. But what isn't disappointing is today's video sponsor, Gravistar. They sent over the coolest Bluetooth speaker I've ever seen, known as the Mars Pro. The design is incredible. The body is made of a high quality zinc alloy. It features multiple RGB lighting effects to make this thing glow in the dark. You actually will see it in the background right behind me in this video, it's just right there. And it has intuitive touch sensitive volume controls for music. And speaking of music, this thing really does deliver. It features a dual 2.5 speaker system, a passive bass radiator, and a 20 watt output of power. In translation, it gets very loud, it's punchy, the sound is clean and not distorted, even at the highest volumes. I was genuinely shocked at how good and loud it got for the size of this speaker. This is in part thanks to their DSP audio algorithm built into the speaker to ensure accurate mids, crisp highs, and a punchy bass. As for battery life, the Mars Pro features USB-C charging, which is awesome, and it is rated to last up to 15 hours on a single charge. And you can also pair up to two of these speakers at the same time, like one was already very loud, but two of them can be synced up and give you this true stereo wireless experience, which I think is pretty cool. So if you guys are interested in checking out this speaker, there will be a link in the top of the description down below for you guys to check it out. Again, thank you so much Gravistar for sponsoring today's video. So let's get back to the gaming side of things. I did say that there just wasn't that many PS5 exclusives that have come out in the past 12 months that really caught my attention. So. I did spend the majority of my time playing games offered through the PlayStation Plus subscription where you got a lot of old enhanced PS4 games that did run better on the PS5. So games like Ratchet and Clank, God of War, and Uncharted were experiences that I actually never had a chance to play when I had a PS4, so it was refreshing to touch base on these games all these years later on the PS5 at higher frame rates. And I can tell you that these games actually aged very well. There's a huge library of great PS4 enhanced games you can get on your PS5. So if you're brand new to the PlayStation universe, even though there is a lack of PS5 exclusive, there is an abundance of PS4 enhanced games for you to enjoy. I also did try PlayStation Now. It's a separate subscription service offered by Sony where they grant you access to an extensive library of PS4, PS3, and PS2 games. And the biggest sell for it right now is the ability to play Horizon Zero Dawn for free. 
I sunk a ton of hours into that game. It quickly became one of the best games I've played in years. And that happened to be a PS4 game and it happens to run incredibly well on the PS5. Again, with all the praise that I'm giving with all of these old PS4 games that run amazing on PS5, they're still PS4 games, right? Like there just isn't that many PS5 exclusives that I really felt were generation defining. The only recent one that I was able to play was Horizon Forbidden West. That game is amazing. It looks stunning. It's a game that I feel defines what the PS5 is capable of going into the future. And I've just sunk so many hours into that game, more than I would care to admit. But at the same time, this game is available on PS4. And a lot of the games that I have enjoyed on the PS5 this year, or last year, I should say, also are available on the PS4. So it just makes you sort of question, are you really missing out right now not having a PS5? It's hard to say because yes, the PS5 is capable of true 4K gaming and it does have all these included ray tracing effects and lighting effects and new enhancements to load times that really do make a difference to your gaming experience. But at the same time, the games are still available on the PlayStation 4. A weird dilemma in my head, I'll kind of leave it up to you to decide if you feel that you're missing out. I personally, from the gaming side of things, it, it's hard to say right now that you are. I would say in years like three, four, five, and six of this console's life cycle, that's where things might start to feel like you're missing out. And another thing that I want to bring up is the very anti-consumer nature of the PS5 right now when it comes to its subscription services. So there's PlayStation Now and there's PlayStation Plus and their offerings are similar and different all at the same time. PlayStation Plus does have PS4 games on there and then PlayStation Now also has a set of PS4 games and PS3 games and PS2 games and then PlayStation Plus comes with online multiplayer, PlayStation Now does not. It's just all jumbled up and, and different and, and, and it's just not good for the consumer. These should really be one subscription. You pay one price every month to get online multiplayer and to get access to all these games, just like how they do it on Xbox. Like they're literally doing that on Xbox. So you buy a thing called Game Pass, you get access to a big library of current generation games. You get access to Xbox One games, Xbox 360 games. You get online multiplayer and Xbox has committed to giving every Game Pass holder free downloads on day one to their first party game exclusives that come out for these new consoles every however long they come out. So Halo Infinite was available day one to anybody who had the subscription. Forza was available day one to anybody who had the subscription. The same cannot be said with Sony. Even if you bought PlayStation Plus, even if you bought PlayStation Now, that's two big subscriptions and they still don't come with like the latest PlayStation 5 game, Horizon Forbidden West. You have to buy that out of pocket as well. If you wanted to get Spider-Man, you have to buy that out of pocket as well. And you sort of to get my point here, it's a very expensive experience. It just starts to add up more on Sony side of things, which is really weird because the Xbox and PlayStation exist in the same biosphere. They're competing in the same like goals and everything, but the Xbox is actually working out to be a cheaper experience than the PlayStation. Just something to think about. That's my long-winded two cents on the gaming experience on the PS5. But now let's dive into the other aspects of this console, starting with the controller. The new DualSense controller has proven to be a game-changing experience for me. The new adaptive triggers and refined haptic feedback allow me to be more immersed in the games that I play. This can be through guns having more resistance as I shoot, or the controller providing direct feedback to my hand where it actually feels like I'm skating on ice. I did not realize how much this actually changed my experience until I bought an Xbox Series S. Don't get me wrong, I love Xbox and I love what the Xbox controller has to offer, but it made me miss the newer haptic feedback features that Sony offers on their controller. Also, there have been a lot of accessories that have come out for the PS5 in the past 12 months. 
I've personally dived my hands into buying an additional controller so I can play with friends. I bought the official Sony controller docking station to charge and 100% recommend that thing. It is so convenient. You guys have to buy something like that. If you do pick up a PS5, it doesn't need to be Sony's officially branded one because I know that is still selling out even to this day. Um, and also I picked up a gaming headset from Sony when I am playing some competitive multiplayer. I do have a review of that headset already, so I will leave a link in the description down below for you guys to check that out. Sony has also given everyone the capability to finally upgrade the internal storage of the consoles for the more hardcore gamers out there. For me personally, I'm more of a casual gamer. I just don't have as much time as I would like to play video games. So I never need more than like five or six games installed at any one time. Um, but if you're somebody who feels like you need to have a lot of games installed all at once, you can finally do that on the PS5. You can expand your storage to as much as you like. In terms of the console's design, I've always been in love with the way that it looked since day one. I never doubted how good it looked in the renders and it blew me away when I finally had it in my living room for the first time. As of this review, you do have the capacity to change the color of your PS5 with Sony's official faceplate, so there should now be no debate or issue with getting a PS5 to match your style and preference. And another bonus to the design is that the PS5 runs whisper quiet, so I've never really had any issues with fan noises being too loud or the console itself being too loud. That's a real bonus in my opinion. Overall, despite all the negative aspects of the PS5 that I did bring up, I'm pretty happy with my purchase. There have been a lot of great gaming experiences that literally blew my mind, like Spider-Man Miles Morales, blew my mind. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, blew my freaking mind. Horizon Forbidden West was an amazing, an amazing, game for the PS5. It looks amazing, runs amazing. I cannot believe a game like that exists right now on the PS5. But if you just heard my sentence, I named only three games that made me feel that way. And I've had this console for over a year now. So I don't know yet whether or not the PS5 is still worth a buy just yet. I know a lot of you want to buy it and I know it's really hard to buy it right now but I don't think you're missing out just yet. A lot of these games are still available on PS4. I think once we get to a point where new PS5 games are no longer available on the PlayStation 4, that's when I think FOMO is really gonna kick in and you really are gonna miss out. But let's cross off our fingers and hope that when we do get to that point, that there aren't gonna be chip shortages, that PS5s will be plenty available for anybody out there to buy and they might even have a PS5 Slim by that point at a cheaper price. Who knows? Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Drop a like down below if you did. Comment down below, hashtag PS5 if you made it to the end of the video, and subscribe if you're brand new to my channel. But I'll catch all of you guys in the next video. Peace.